And we're good. Boom. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the weekly Mozilla Webmaker Community Call. We've got a really exciting agenda this week, and so let me draw your attention as we get started to line 88. Are we starting there, Matt, the crazy launch land everything list? This sounds good. I, I'm not sure who wants to start us off here. Aaron, do you want to? Uh, sure, I can. <clears throat> um, so if you guys haven't noticed, um, we've had quite a lot of launches lately. Um, in fact, there's on line 83, there's a link to um, my blog post that I posted this morning that starts to just kind of um, enumerate through all of our launches. It's quite astounding. Um, but yesterday there were two huge launches um, uh, of Symbol, our, our new uh, uh, web making tool, and then webmaker.org. Um, I will, I guess, hand over to you, Matt, or someone representing Symbol to, to go a little deeply into those two launches. Uh, sure. Uh, so there's a, uh, as Erin mentioned, in addition to her blog post uh, on line uh, 83, uh, there's also the uh, Moz blog post that many probably saw yesterday on line uh, 92. This is kind of where we let Earl and Pratt know about Symbol. Um, and also, as Aaron mentioned, about the new webmaker.org. Um, so I'll just pull that up on the screen here. Um, nothing surprising to most people on this call, I'm sure, but I guess the, the, the biggest new addition are uh, the project section, uh, <clears throat> which is the result of a ton of work uh, from the learning team and everybody on this call, really. Um, and in particular, I just want to give a shout out to Jess Klein for a huge amount of work. Uh, plus Laura and, and others. Um, the tool section, which thanks to Chris Appleton, uh, looks beautiful. Uh, you'll notice that Thimble has uh, a nice new logo, um, that a, as do the uh, X-ray goggles. Um, so I just encourage folks to check out the tools page. Uh, it's just kind of a nice, crisp description of each of the three major webmaker tools. Uh, one note is that um, uh, the popcorn team and I will actually be working on an updated uh, description for, for popcorn. Uh, so you can look for that later this week. And I guess the other thing I just want to call out is the about page, which I'll pull up now. Um, and so this has some updated talking points. Uh, so if you're, if you're wondering about how to talk about uh, WebMaker to the world, uh, there's lots in here uh, that will help. Um, and in addition, we tried to uh, include a lot of quotes and validation from the press and from um, prominent members of the Mozilla community um, to really kind of describe WebMaker in their own words in addition to just uh, our own. So lots of awesome stuff uh, to check out and play around with on webmaker.org. I don't know if anybody in the Symbol team uh, wants to do a quick update or shout out as well. Michelle Levesque, I don't know, are you, are you there? Star seven to unmute. Anybody from Thimble want to take a bow, highlight some new work? Are you too shy or too? <laughs> Looks like she's in a noisy area. Oh, um, uh, okay. Um, I mean, I can I can say a little about Thimble, but. Um, Again, well, and also, by the way, thank you for um, the shout-out to the learning projects. I should have said that um, at the beginning. Very exciting. But Symbol, um, again, is for those of you that haven't heard us talking about it um, in every other sentence that we speak over the last few months, um, is our um, uh, uh, two-pane editor tool, which allows you to um, uh, you know, build things using CSS and, and JavaScript and um, directly edit or build the code on the left and see the rendered page on the right. Um, and it has a bunch of cool features like um, some JS libraries to help quote unquote spell check as you go. So it's, it's sort of error checking um, your code and your syntax as you're building and giving you kind of um, uh, helpful hints there. And then you can also click on the tags and actually uh, see more information about those tags from the MDN, um, MDN Resource Center. So um, all of those features were released as JS libraries so that people with other editors or other similar tools can actually pull in those, 
those features and we can kind of start to create some standards around um, how this type of stuff works. So um, that's kind of the bones of Thimble. And then again, there are a whole set of um, learning symbol projects that sit on top of Thimble. And these projects are hackable um, uh, web pages that um, have a particular theme and learning challenge um, kind of built into the page so that by editing the code on the left, you're actually completing a learning challenge that you see rendered on the right um, and learning some HTML, CSS, um, and some other kind of softer skills in the process. So, um, so it's a pretty huge launch, um, and it happened in a very, very short amount of time. And so huge kudos to the Thimble team, which kind of extended across all of our, um, all of our groups um, at MoFo, um, and definitely like the dev team, which kind of pulled, pulled sort of all stops, pulled all of our dev resources, most of our dev resources together to really make this happen. Um, and of course, Michelle Levesque was the product manager that really drove the ship. She did a great job. And then uh, again, shout out to Jess for, for um, really kind of being the liaison between the learning group and the dev team. So huge amount of work, and, and so far it's just getting like rave reviews. So very awesome. Very cool. I guess the only other shout out we should we should do, Aaron, is uh, uh, Mozilla Ignite. Um, so there's um, a link to a roundup of press coverage in line 86, um, and that blog post also includes video of our own Mark Sermon uh, announcing the launch of Mozilla Ignite at the uh, the White House. So if you just scroll down to the bottom there, uh, you'll see video of Mark um, looking very uh, Dare I say? Well, I don't want to say presidential, but <laughs> very august. Right. Yeah. Right. I guess one thing to just say about the Ignite um, launch is that um, they launched earlier than expected um, because the White House lifted a press embargo. You know, all of the crazy politics stuff that is involved with working with people in DC, but um, and they. Um, in true MoFo form, you know, kind of pulled it together quickly and, and just took it in stride and, and had an awesome launch. Um, so, so awesome. And super kudos to that team as well. Yeah, big congratulations. Right on. Well, I think that brings us to the end of Crazy Launch Land. So congratulations to all those folks taking a bow. Uh, looks like we're going right back to Aaron for the weekend of code this weekend. Line 128, Aaron, do you want to tell us what to expect in this weekend of code? Yes. So um, we, uh, we are launching the weekend of code. I'm, I'm just looking. So we have something later in the agenda on line 180, which we're going to kind of dive into some of the specifics about um, kind of what to expect and how to prepare from a, a very kind of logistical standpoint. But um, I just wanted to give kind of a high level um, shout out to the fact that again we're we're launching the weekend of, um, we're launching the summer code party this weekend um, June 23rd and 24th is the quote unquote weekend of code um, and so what to expect we have almost 100 events in the um, in the event system um, that are going to launch this weekend um, and I guess one thing to note is those are just the ones that we know about um, in fact I know we actually know about a few that aren't in there so so we kind of expect that there's a um, even broader base, especially of kind of kitchen tables and smaller events. But um, I threw a few in here just to highlight kind of the representation around the world. Um, there's you know Code for America and, and, and a Noise Bridge event in San Francisco, Third Dojo in, in New York City, Chicago, Toronto, LA, Tokyo, London, Vancouver, Nairobi, um, Japan. Or I said to be already. So there's um, there's tons of coverage. And again, these are the big events. There's also a bunch of just, you know, parents getting together with their kids or peers getting together around kitchen tables. So, um, so super, super exciting again. Um, I should, I guess, call out one, one, one I did want to call it was that the Chicago one is, um, is being run by our very own Chris McAvoy and Dan Sinker. So, um, so we have a lot of our, um, our staff that are involved with um, events. Also Toronto is Heather Payne. So, so we've got a lot of stuff that, that Mozilla people are involved in, but then a huge amount that are um, the community as well. Um, but then it doesn't stop there. So again, the Weekend of Code is the kickoff. It's like the call to action. Um, but the, again, it's called the Summer Code Party because it's, it's expected to extend across the summer. And so 
there are um, hundreds of more events in there, um, almost 300 that I know of um, that extend across the summer. And these three are um, three that, again, just wanted to show you kind of the, the um, geographical span. Um, all three of these are actually on June 30th, but there's the Hive um, New York one with Tumblr, which is going to be super awesome. Um, there's one in Paris, there's one in Dallas. Um, so again, it's continuing. There actually was one in Maine, which is awesome. Um, but a worldwide um, party that really does extend across the summer. And I'm sure we'll have many, many more um, that sign up after they hear kind of all of the awesomeness that comes out of the Weekend of Code. So that's a nice um, segue into sort of how to get involved. And so the kind of easiest low bar way is, um, is to follow the, the hashtag mods party on Twitter and just retweet and blog and story tell about the stuff that you're seeing. So I think everybody can do that because um, it is going to be exciting and um, definitely stuff that you want to kind of put your name by um, on retweets. But then, then there's a little bit, you know, you could go a step further and, um, and host a kitchen table event, invite your friends over, invite, you know, pull your kids together, your grandkids, your nieces, whatever, um, and burn through some of the, the web making content together. And then um, there's also, mm -hmm. we, we definitely still need some kind of help with the support side of things. So there's a hashtag mods help where people will be asking things like, you know, how do I use symbol or, um, you know, how do I see my event on the event site? And, and so we just need people to help there. So again, um, Ben's going to go into the sort of volunteer stuff more uh, a little later in the agenda, but, but definitely just wanted to give a shout out. There's still lots of ways to get involved and even some low bar ways like, like just helping us story tell stuff. Um, so questions? Hey, Erin. Um, this is Matt. I, I have one question, which is this is great, and I think we're going to turn it, try to turn it into a blog post, like what's happening as part of the Global Weekend of Code, and try to get that out like tomorrow. Um, and Rebecca actually created in line 143 um, like a kind of a short list of vetted events um, that will be happening this weekend. Um, so it's pretty, it's pretty cool. I mean, it just tells a great story. You know, events happening in London, Zurich, the Philippines, Bogota, Jakarta, Bolivia, Islamabad. Like it's re it's really inspiring when, when you kind of see that complete list. So I guess um, just wanted to check and make sure that um, like you think that this is an okay list for us to use and, and uh, publish as a as a as part of a larger blog post about what's happening this weekend. Yeah. So at first glance, absolutely. Um, this is awesome. I mean, I. Like we d we are building other search functionality in, but it's not there yet, so it's, you can't actually search by date yet. Um, you have to search by location. So I was kind of just burning through some of like the big um, uh, kind of cities in mind to to get a list to just show today. But this is awesome. This is way more in depth and um, helps you an even deeper story. Yeah, I just wanted to comment on this list. Can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, one thing is. My word vetted doesn't necessarily mean that um, I could vouch for the people running the event. So just take an extra look at it before you tweet it or promote it. Um, I'll scan it again before I send it out through tweets. This is sort of what the list was for. Um, and if we're going to put it into a blog post, we'll take another look at it. So you know, just keep in mind, if you see anything that has personal info, um, probably don't tweet that out. I don't think we want to be responsible for that. Um, so just put uh, uh, take a second look before you use any of the content in here. I've scanned yep. it, but sometimes, you know. Great, and I was yeah, I was that's a good point because I think um, there there's a checkbox at the end of the sign up form that said make this public or not, and and you know I, I fear that some people might miss that sometimes, and and so I would say like not to include links to kitchen table ones, and we can certainly talk about the fact that like there's kitchen tables happening in you know Florida, New York, Maine, whatever. Um, but, but just in case those people accidentally made those public and you know, don't want people showing up at their, their house, um, I would probably say don't necessarily link to those, but, but use those more as like geographic spread. Um, but certainly the ones that do want register, like, um, attendees or registrations like Hive pop-ups or Hack GMs, um, we can point people directly to the sign up there. Okay, that's, that's very helpful. Thanks, Karen. So do not include links to 
kitchen table event so that strangers don't show up at your house. <laughs> okay. Making them cool. One, one really small thing I'd add to the don't do t to kitchen table things is that there are events that are marked as kitchen tables that are clearly like open to the public and just called kitchen tables. So like there is, you know, if it's, if it's like I'm getting together with my wife, then that's clearly a private thing, but there are definitely public ones. Um, so there's yeah. sort of a... This list, this list is, is basically people who said they wanted people to attend and it looked legitimate. So I did okay. a little bit of that is, is in there. Okay, awesome. Right on. Well, uh, Matt, do you want to say anything about Slash News and Slash Support at Line 179 in uh, following that? Uh, sure. Um, I guess we'll circle back. I know that Popcorn team has some uh, stuff they want to present as well, but I guess I'll just oh. mention that um, we're, yeah. we're, uh, people have been asking, well, People have been asking about um, news and, and support, and I just I just wanted to mention there's 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 active tickets filed on this uh, in in line of and a lot of discussion with the web dev team. Um, please do not share the link on line 180. We're actually um, kind of troubleshooting some issues with that page, so please do not tweet or share it. I just wanted to let folks know that something like this is in the works, um, and we're just not sure what exactly. Um, it's going to include and where it is going to live. But our goal is just to create a single sort of like source of one-stop shopping for support for this weekend and news about what's happening this weekend. So the support page will look something um, like what you see here, um, a bunch of very useful links in the right-hand column uh, to where to find the frequently asked questions, how to get help on Twitter, um, how to email us with support questions, documentation around you know blogging and photos and tagging and all that kind of stuff, um, and even a little chat widget that makes it easy for you to pop into IRC even if you don't know what IRC is. Um, so what we're kind of struggling with is um, embedding this like new support stream that you see uh, in the left hand column. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna sort that out uh, later today, and we'll just send folks an update then. Very nice. Thank you, Matt. Hey, let's talk about Popcorn Launch and have a presentation there. Um, I've got us on line 172 and copy paste is making my morning dizzy. Brett, are you the one copy pasting the early preview of Popcorn Maker into line 173? You know I am, Alan Gunn. Brett, could you tell us more about that really great new content that's appeared in the Etherpad? You bet. I'm excited too. Um, so we've had a pretty hectic couple of weeks over in Popcorn Land, um, and I'm super stoked about uh, where we ended up. Um, I'm going to screen share now. Am I doing that, uh, Matt? I think uh, I am. Uh, yep. Yes, you are. Cool. So um, we just set up last night a site at maker.mozillapopcorn.org, which is going to be um, our home for the web app um, uh, over the next couple of months for the, for the summer code party. And um, we're really, really excited about it. And there's a link in there that you can try um, some of the new templates that have been built specifically for the Story Camp activities and which we're we'll be linking to from the WebMaker projects um, later this week. Um, in particular, I wanted to show you guys some new ones that you're not familiar with, which are absolutely going to blow your mind. Um, the first one is called the Robots Template. Uh, so this was created by um, Kate Hudson, our design intern, who we're all going to be working for uh, within the next couple of years, clearly. Um, if you click on the robots template, it brings up um, it brings up the template, and you can see here that the popcorn maker interface has gone through uh, quite a refresh. There's tons of little um, usability improvements, such as this one over here, where I can zoom the timeline in and out. Uh, up here, you'll see all of our project management, so we can now sign in with browser ID, which I'm just going to do here. Um, you can, we have the ability to publish uh, links that are going to work. <laughs> uh, we can view the source of this. Uh, obviously, we can save and we can restore our projects. 
But this particular template is awesome because it makes robots talk to you. I'm going to try it out for a sec here. You hearing that? That's robots talking to you. And this, this, is, this has been developed um, for the Story Camp lesson to give students who are interested in learning web native cinema um, an idea of what we call a procedural story. So uh, within this template, there are JavaScript events that fire here along the timeline that are timed to this video that we created specifically for this template. So if I go in here and I edit this and say, the code party is awesome, and back it up, this robot is going to talk to me. Isn't the code party awesome? We can go over here and the robots talk about how they're going to invade uh, the universe, and they're going to invade the universe here in Vancouver. So we can change that to they're going to invade uh, wherever one of these code parties takes place, like let's just put in Nairobi, except they don't know how to spell it. Wow, you sure don't. <laughs> See? See, it error corrected properly for me and we've got the Google Maps. We've got the Google Maps uh, daemon filters going on here, so I'm going to change that. Uh, we can play this and then it's going to edit that map uh, right uh, over top of the video. There are, you know, literally, literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of uh, tickets that have been filed to make this happen. Um, if you go over here, it's going to bring up Chuck, <laughs> Chuck Norris. We've got this new one, which is the uh, Zoink plugin that 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 uh, Kate created. Um, apparently, the, the the robots are really scared of kittens, so. Um, the only thing that can stop them is this object. So the only thing that can stop them is this object, which is kittens. So we we've, we've edited this Flickr plugin to uh, query uh, Flickr for any image called kitten. It will pull it down and edit that over top of the video image uh, and so on and so forth. So this is like an extremely advanced little piece of software. Popcorn Maker is uh, it's like a grandfather clock seeing it all come together. Um, and I actually just want to take a moment here to thank uh, everybody who has been working on this over the past, over the past six weeks. We have landed uh, I believe it's 350 tickets. We've done three releases. There was uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5.1, and 0 0.5.2. And on top of everything else that we've done to make this interface amazing, uh, we've also switched over to Mozilla Labs infrastructure and uh, done pretty extensive QA to make sure this is, this is going to work when we send everybody over from the summer campaign. So just please a round of applause uh, for uh, everybody who worked on this. Uh, I'm going to start that off. Yeah, yeah. And It's, it's probably not a good idea to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, the people who worked on this uh, at Mozilla are, are John and Scott and Bobby, uh, obviously Kate. There's tons of folks over at Seneca CDOT uh, led by David Humphrey and including uh, Dave Seafree, Chris Caros, uh, Robert Seneca. Um, I can't think of anybody else I'm forgetting, obviously, except uh, Kate and Ben Moskowitz. Absolutely, last but not least, did a hero job of, of managing all this coming together at the last minute. And last but not least, designing himself uh, this page, which is the curriculum uh, that all of this is for. Uh, so this is the Story Camp uh, page um, where we've designed uh, a, a series of videos that week by week um, introduce uh, learners to these concepts. And so obviously I want to give a shout out to Laura Hilliger and everybody on the learning team who, uh, who, who pushed this through. Um, so these are all really uh, interesting and well produced videos uh, that, that, that are attached to each chapter. And so in each chapter there's a series of resources and assignments uh, that the students are meant to go through. Uh, that robot template is one of those and, it, and again the idea is to give them, um, uh, get their feet wet in uh, web native storytelling. Um, <clears throat> so we've, in, in the first week we're going to have Damien Kulash kick it off. So that's this week, this Thursday, he's confirmed. Uh, next week we'll have Cory Doctorow giving a, a history of media and they'll be doing the DIY 
They'll be on the WebMaker site for uh, remixing a commercial using the pop-up template. Uh, the following week uh, is Jonathan McIntosh talking about remix. Where they're going to use Use Jack and the gender remixer. Uh, week four, again, Michelle's going to come in and they're going to start playing with Thimble. Uh, week five, uh, they're going to be using the newscaster template, which is another template that Kate made, which is equally kick-ass. Um, one of the fun things about this one is uh, you can add your own title cards and uh, photos in the background. So as you can see here, all of this these, this layout here is designed using CSS and JavaScript, and uh, the students can, can get a taste of how, how that works. Um, and week six is um, Greg Pack and Tommy Pilata are going to come and give the kids some career advice, basically. So that is all. Um, but please, if there are any questions at this point, uh, I'd like to pass it back to you guys. Well, it, I'm not sure if Ben is on the call or, 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 or Bobby or anyone else that, that wants to add anything that I, that I left out. I, I am on the call, but you did such a good job. Uh, this hey, Jacob, there's some questions under line uh, 180, uh, 182. Some more serious than others. <laughs> Um, Orville Redenbacher played a key role in this. Uh, without his, his leadership, it's clear that there wouldn't be as much corn being popped. Um, so <laughs> enough said about that. Um, is there a full list of plugins in the right corner? So this is a good, this is a good question. Um, right now, no. What, the way that the templates are written is that we um, – th there's a manifest for each template that describes which plugins are uh, work for it. However, this is a good – if you go to – yeah, no, so, so the answer is no at this point, but that's a good feature request, and it's not hard, but it's a bit complicated. And yes, this is totally bloggable and tweetable. Uh, please try it. Um, please uh, try that maker.mozillapopcorn.org uh, link out and, and try the robots template. We're still actually chasing one bug in Chrome. Uh, due to videos taking a, a bit of time to load. But um, we, we do need bugs filed and the issue tracker, if it's not in this etherpad, we'll put it in. Uh, there was also a question about adding the new popcorn templates to the projects gallery. Yes. So I filed a bug in the WebMaker issue tracker about that, about restoring the ones that we decided not to go live with on Thursday. But I absolutely want to add activities for the robots one and for the newscaster one. So I don't know exactly who to coordinate on with that, but that's definitely something that I want to do. And we're going to be doing, we're going to be running a workshop in, in Toronto at the uh, Kids, Kids Love Code uh, event. And it's, this is what we're going to have them do. Awesome. Very nice. Excellent. Any other questions before we move forward? Brett, what a fantastic demo. Thank you so much. Hey, Gunnar. Actually, I think I heard Jacob um, wanted to throw something. Jacob, you there? Hi. Hey. Um, I was just going to mention uh, that so we have uh, 28 different youth centers that are some way or another involved in Story Camp this month uh, throughout the summer, so just so you can know. Um, about 20 youth centers and roughly 250 kids in some way or another will be playing with popcorn. Nice. That is all. And they'll, they'll also be like, as, as you can see in week four, they're going to be uh, heading over to, they're, they're, they're going to crash the code party in some way or, or form as well. Um, so there'll be lots of, there'll be lots of youth centers that are, um, that are showing up because of that. Very nice. Right on. Well, thank you, Popcorn Project. Thank you, Brett. Thank you, everybody. Let us move ahead to line 196. This is the All Aaron All the Time weekly call. Aaron, really back is. to you for X-Ray Goggles Update. It really is, although I'm pretty sure this is the last time I'm talking. So, um, Yeah, so we just wanted to give people a quick update on the X-Ray Goggles um, because there, there are some decisions made internally that I don't think have, have really been um, have really kind of disseminated or been publicly talked about. So, so we're, um, 
we, you'll notice that on webmaker.org, when you look at tools, X-ray goggles is there. Um, so definitely um, still uh, treating and plan to keep treating the X-ray goggles as a top level product. But for now, we are temporarily disabling the publish functionality. So basically, the X-ray goggles work. You can still do everything. Um, you can hack the page. You can look at the bones of the page. But, um, but typically, how it worked before is then once you finish hacking your page, you can click the P in the bottom le left corner, and um, that <coughs> publish uh, hosts your um, your hacked page to a to a URL that you can then share. Um, because the X-ray goggles have really been an alpha or prototype mode for all along, so we've kind of been flying under the radar with them. Um, that we haven't gone through the necessary security reviews, um, and the the sort of point where that becomes an issue is once somebody's published it, um, and and again, it's, it's public on the web. So, um, so we've temporarily disabled that for now. Um, while we are doing those security reviews, and, and our intention is to um, re-enable it um, and kind of move the extra goggles to a more production mode once once we get through all of that. Uh, so I know that that does um, create some challenges for people that were you know, had sort of already built um, some events or plans around X-ray goggles, and so so we have um, a project there online 202 that walks you through kind of how to make how to take a screenshot and post it to Twitter and Flickr. Um, another idea is um, if you have a, blo a blog specific to your event, you can um, have learners post that blog or, or for them. So, so there are some workarounds for now. Um, and again, we intend to um, to build the publish back in once we have those security reviews completed. And that's it all. Excellent. Any questions for Erin on any of that? All right, not seeing anything in the uh, chat channel. All right, uh, Marilyn Wigglesworth, a new voice on the weekly call. We have not heard from you in a while, Marilyn. I wonder if you would be so kind as to tell us tidings of great new staff member joy. <laughs> Hi, Jenna. Hi, everyone. Um, I just wanted to introduce Angela Plowman. She's coming in Monday. Her first will be her first day as the grant manager. And she's going to take on a big chunk of uh, the grant. And so all you program managers, beware, because she's going to come and attack you and try to get some information from you come next week. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, Angela. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> I think the, they gave me the title Whip Cracker. Yes, yeah, she's officially the Whip Cracker of Missoula Foundation. <laughs> awesome. Nice. Does that come with an open taser? <laughs> uh, not to my knowledge yet. Yes. Right on. Excellent. Well, definitely welcome, Angela. Great to have you in the group. Um, moving to line 210, Ben, managing the summer code party. What can you tell us about numbers and protocols and process and things? All right. Um, so this is going to be the, the most fun part of the call, I'm sure. Um, and also, uh, if I could ask the beginning, Michelle and Rebecca, to go off mute so that if you guys have anything to add, to just um, hop in in real time. Um, so first update, and Aaron's about this, is we're up to about 370 events total, um, at around 100 of which are this weekend. And there's going to be sort of another influx in the final days as snippets begin pushing to webmaker.org and we do final emails and all that sort of stuff. Um, so we're in good shape to have a, lot of, a ton of activity, and um, that is all thanks to all of you. Um, so the, the first top line piece is we've sort of talked through, um, we've talked through what you can do to help. Um, but if you haven't, you, if you've yet to sign up for something, or if you're just doing a half day at the Toronto office and want to find something to do with a few other hours over the weekend, um, please. Uh, please sign up at Volunteer Opportunities at Line 214. Um, that will send to a different roles you can sign up for. Um, and then uh, Rebecca has created this awesome volunteer manual linked at Line 215. Um, and with the remainder of the call, um, we're actually going to walk through what each of those look like. Um, or sorry, not quite the remainder of the call because we want to leave at least five minutes to talk about. So not to talk about game. Um, 
Uh, so if I could ask everyone to um, click over to the volunteer manual, um, which is linked in a couple of places in this section, so the online 215 and 223. Hey, Ben. Um, yeah. Hey, Ben. Could you, could you increase your volume a little bit? And I'm, I'm going to re-mute because we're getting some echo or line noise. Okay. Is that okay? One sec. The conference has been muted. So Ben and Gunnar, you'll need to star seven, but hopefully that will increase the audio quality a little. Is this better? Yep. Thank you. Okay. Um, I made no changes. Um, <laughs> excellent. Um, so yeah, so if everyone could walk, could click through the, lines at li the link at line 215, um, we will walk through the volunteer manual that Rebecca uh, um, put together. Um, great. So, uh, so first of all, the, the main thing is, that starting at line 13 are all the different channels where sort of the conversation will be happening. Um, the key thing here, Matt kind of alluded to, is um, the, the, the precise shape that um, the sort of scribble stuff at slash support is going to take is still very much up in the air and may in fact wind up taking the shape of something much uh, simpler. Um, and so the, the, the very basic ask is to sign up at the SCP have all signed up on the ether pad. Um, and you can also e uh, you know, email Moz Party or you know, me or Michelle or Rebecca if you have any questions. Um, so th there's sort of two large buckets of ways in which people can help. Um, the first and sort of most outwardly friendly is uh, storytelling, which is just getting people to talk about um, what they've made and what they're doing, and then also get uh, people to help broadcast that out if they see something. So you know, if you see something, someone's blog, if you see something, someone tweeted, um, ways to service it so that we can make sure to broadcast it out and tell as much of the world as is paying attention. Um, so this is divided up into, um, and it's, it's very step by step, so not going into each step, but um, so you know, if you have a blog, um, blog about it and email us. Um, if you are on Facebook, uh, we'll be, there are sort of two different places on Facebook where this conversation is going to be happening. One is on, uh, on Mozilla's main page. There will be posts and there will be, there'll be ways for us to be broadcasting out and also ways for people to be commenting and asking questions there. Um, and then we've also got a summer code party group where people can share their own work, share videos and content and links, um, and also sort of ask questions and all that sort of stuff. Um, on Twitter, we will be again tweeting out a lot. Um, there's also a lot. There's, there's the Moz Party hashtag that you can use on Twitter to um, to talk about what you're doing, and also to see what others are doing and sort of retweet and help get the word out. Um, certainly, having every our very disparate staff and community tweeting a lot this weekend will help um, create a sense of this being a huge thing. Um, We've got a Mozilla WebMaker Tumblr, um, and so if you want to put things up in that realm of things, uh, we've got sort of a, a mechanism for doing that and a mechanism for getting sharing it out. Um, and certainly, some of the symbol projects, like Make Your Own Meme and such, are decidedly symbol uh, Tumblr ready. Um, and then the other thing is that if you see an event in your area or in some other area where you have connections. Um, promote them, right, and get the word out. Um, skipping down to uh, line 96, um, we get into the sort of the support team, which is a slightly. It'll be it'll involve sort of talking to more users um, and and I, and more about sort of troubleshooting events and problems that people are having. Um, so it's sort of the same lineup of channels, um, including both Moz Party and Moz Health, and also the uh, Moz Symbol stuff. We'll add that in here in just a sec. Um, the first step you're doing this is to add your name um, in the volunteer sign-up etherpad. Um, the about scribble stuff is um, sort of – I'm going to skip over it in part because it sounds like we might not be using it nearly as much. Um, if Matt or Rebecca, you disagree with doing that, just say so in the comments and we can walk through it now. Um, in terms of uh, what you should do on each channel, um, so if you're on Twitter, 
the primary um, the primary stream of hashtags are Moz Party and Moz Help, and people tweeting at Mozilla. Um, and they're all they're also sort of the separate streams for people with specific uh, symbol problems. Um, so the basic idea is we're building a wiki with um, a, a bunch of FAQs, um, and the idea is that those will be easily grabbable or at least linkable. And so you can just uh, if you see a question and you don't immediately know the answer, go to the FAQ, find the answer, tweet it back at them. If it's something that you don't know the answer and that isn't in the FAQ, um, you can ask uh, you know, Ben or Michelle or Matt or Rebecca or Mary, um, and we can ask you in the right way. Um, and there's a mob party at mozilla.org email, which is also in here somewhere. Um, and so it's sort of a similar story on Facebook without the replying and retweeting terminology. Um, but it's basically go into the Summer Club Party group or, follow, or you know, like our page on Facebook so you can participate there um, and just see what people are saying and see what people are asking and chime in in comments and be helpful. Um, on IRC, we'll have the Moz Party channel, um, which hopefully will be a way for people to, um, to talk with us um, and ask questions, and it will be a sort of slightly more insidery conversation, I imagine, just by virtue of being the <laughs> on IRC. Um, but uh, I think it will be a great way to have a sort of real-time back channel of what's going on um, along with our normal sort of pound foundation. Um, and the other thing is uh, wiki gardening, right, which is hopefully something that you're doing. It, this is basically if you answer something that is not already answered in the FAQ, we need to get it into the FAQ. Um, and so there are, there are a couple of volunteer roles of people who are going to be sort of scouring the support streams that are happening for new answers to put them in. But if you know you made something new, um, it's very useful to just put that in there. Um, and that's just a normal uh, public Mozilla Wiki page, so it's just sign in and add it. Um, and we'll also be adding to this manual a little bit, in particular with the glossary of hashtags. Um, sort of an escalation tree for if things are going wrong, who to talk to, and how to reach them. Um, and yeah, uh, so there's all that. Are there uh, questions or anything like that? Excellent. So this is this is great, Ben. I guess I guess my main question is like, what's the next step for kind of polishing this this up and publishing it in a form that um, it may be a, a little prettier than a ether pad. Like, are we going to um, turn this into a, a wiki page or blog post, or what? What do you think? Um, I think probably a wiki, uh, but not. I mean, I, I we'll just talk about it on our summer code party call uh, this okay. right after immediately following this one. But I imagine wiki, and there's a there's a couple of standing questions to think about what we want to make public or not, but. Hey Ben, this is Carla. I have a question about when things, when people answer questions on Twitter. Unless you're following everybody, you don't actually know if a question's already been answered. And I'm just, I'm just wondering how we might address that. Um, so it's kind of a difficult. I think there, that's sort of a hole in the system we set up. Um, there, the 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 idea is that if you answer, the idea is is that, um, sorry. Um, is your question um, like I as a user post a question and then someone answers me? How do you know if someone has, that someone has already answered me? Not about like the content of the question itself. Right. Um, um, can Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I was just going to say that probably the easiest way right now um, until we resolve the scribble question is just when you answer, use Moz Help um, and any and. The idea is to get as many people on the support side tracking Moz help, um, and as as that's going to be sort of the troubleshooting stream. So um, answers should have a Moz help tag as well, and people tracking it should catch that there's an answer already available. Does that help? Yep, I think that's a good start. Okay. That's actually a really good point. I mean. Part of what we've found so far, and Rebecca is actually paying a lot of attention to these streams, is um, you know people don't all use you know Moz help uh, when they have questions. Um, so you know we'll try to address that by modeling the behavior we want, but also by you know making sure answers are tagged Moz help 
ensures that they show up in the right place. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, thanks, guys. And we'll send out a final, like, for the weekend thing on, on uh, Thursday or Friday. But uh, get excited. It's going to be awesome. Fantastic. Ben, thank you so much. Very, very exciting stuff. Well, my friends, I, I don't know what to say. It, it looks like we've come to the nonverbal part of our weekly call, and that would encourage me to refrain from talking too much more. Matt, is there anything else we want to say to folks before we get everybody all excited for a crazy, successful Code Party weekend in a few days? Jeez, I don't think so. Um, let me see. Let me just look at the rest of the pad here. And while you're looking at the rest of the pad, I will report back on behalf of Dan Sinker and the Open News uh, Project and just say that we had a crazy successful Open News Hack Fest at the MIT Media Lab this past weekend. I know Dan will probably be reporting out on next week's call, so I'll hold off on going into details. But lots of fun new tools created and just a lot of fun had. And a big thanks to all the folks at MIT and Knight and all the folks from the Mozilla family that helped make that one so successful, including the five Open News fellows who all made the journey to Boston. So more on that next week, but just wanted to really give a shout out to all the great work that got done in Boston this past weekend. Awesome. That seems like a good note to, to end on unless anybody has anything final. Matt, are all we right. Going to oh, Ben, sorry. Are we just sticking on the line for summer party dive in? Uh, we'll have to um, switch rooms and dial back in. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for another great WebMaker weekly call, and we will see you next week, same time on this channel. Have a great week, and have great code parties. Sweet. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thank you. Please stand by.